as it is a collaborative effort. Um, and often, uh, well, as is the case with these types of projects, everything is a kind of negotiation between various parties. I was even just thinking about that, um, that uh, description about past work. I was like, hmm, who wrote that? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, different emphases kind of come out. But I'll sort of do my best uh, to kind of address um, our project. And um, I suppose I'm thinking, or, or speaking more today about um, the thinking and circumstances that led into our current project at the Tapestry Workshop. So um, Nina and I uh, both have individual practices, um, which I won't talk about, um, but aren't specifically related to the concerns uh, the things that we've done together. So we started working together um, in this larger group called Artist Committee. Um, so that's very much a larger collaborative project. It's not just me and I. Um, and that, uh, as Adriana mentioned, uh, was initially formed in response to um, uh, the uh, NGV's uh, interim contract with Wilson Security that the buyer was also um, operating on the side at that point. Um, and uh, well, I don't want to talk too much about those past projects, but that led us, and well, we kind of did a number of interventions at the NGV um, and other uh, actions related to that issue of offshore detention. Um, one sort of forum uh, for that was uh, the MGB Triennial, which was held at that time, which was sort of late 2017. Um, and Nina and I, uh, one part of our work on that project was Contacting and trying to um, inform artists participating in that triangle about concerns um, with that contract and trying to start some conversation about that situation with those artists. Um, uh, trying to suggest that they could play some role in highlighting this issue. Uh, and that sort of that process was quite interesting to me. Um, as you might expect, many artists were very reluctant to talk to us. Uh, others, others were more um, receptive. Uh, that there were many, you know, ways in which um, responsibility or um, implication in that issue could be sort of mitigated or deferred by uh, talking about like just you know, small part that they would play in that or um, uh, the circumstances of the work that was being exhibited, for instance, or um, how their work might create a um, more dialogue around issues like that, so would have some sort of affirmative relationship to the issue. Anyway, um, I'm not trying to like... Uh, and the undermining of any of those um, uh, positions that those artists took, but but it came apparent that uh, from the, from those sort of conversations that those artists were quite, kind of quite isolated in their relationship to that um, event and how it was programmed, and even the individual conditions under which the different artists were operating, whether they were being paid a fee to be part of the training. Um, or not, uh, what sort of assistance they were um, being offered. Um, so I, I guess that, that sort of, you know, highlighted for me this sort of situation of a lack of transparency, which, um, you know, I think it's a um, common story uh, in um, different practices. Um, and also a kind of general attitude that one wouldn't want to um, uh, 
make one's position further precarious or um, undermine the uh, possibility of receiving more opportunities or um, damaging relationships with either curators or individual uh, institutions and other artists. So and those are all you know, very valid um, concerns. So we started to think um, partly in response to that about um, how that culture could be shifted, how artists might um, be more prepared to be open about the ways in which they work and the conditions that they're offered, um, or the types of pressures that are uh, exerted on them by things like um, lack of opportunities and um, uh, the particular ways in which opportunities are offered the particular expectations that are put on others. And uh, I guess for me personally, that was just also um, a really uh, interesting learning experience of trying to work um, at the intersection of their practice and activism. And basically realizing what you can get away with, and um, uh, in what ways maybe you can leverage things like um, creative uh, work and and other artists' willingness, on the other hand, to actually participate because of course the artist committee was about creative practitioners um, trying to work together. Um, towards specific um, political outcomes. And, oh, I'm missing some slides, but that doesn't matter. Um, another project that I personally was involved in, but uh, was related to Artist Committee, uh, was a project called Art Slog, which Nina developed um, with other participants in Artist Committee. Gabriel's Petri and other people beyond that group. And that work is currently being exhibited at the Town Hall Gallery in the show that was called For Love or Money, um, created by Sophia Clark. Mm -hmm. So uh, do check out, it's an um, amazing show. I um, think yeah, it's until towards the end of August. Um, so that, that work is, is being re exhibited, it was um, developed for. It was, was commissioned as part of the State of the Union exhibition at the um, Gallery of Melbourne Union last year. Uh, and that uh, consists of a database uh, in, in which artists are able, not just artists, artists and art workers, curators, administrators, directors, um, producers, People involved um, in the arts can log stories about particular experiences they've had, and, you know, good, neutral, or bad. Um, and uh, I guess that follows on from that thread about the um, triennial of, of trying to uh, introduce some degree of transparency. Of, um, but. I guess more than that, of um, making it clear that artists' individual experiences are not just isolated, that there's like um, broader kind of cultural issues and uh, structural issues and um, uh, things that are happening continuously and, and situations that um, make one's work in this industry uh, challenging. Um, yeah, so recognizing that, that uh, it's not necessarily, you know, it's not necessarily an individual failing on, um, on behalf of uh, an artist, but that things are somewhat stacked against them in a certain way. Um, and, yeah, and also the broader sense of, I think, reading through that database and, quickly becomes clear, you know, um, broader expectations of uh, 
with artists and um, what what they should expect uh, or not expect in terms of receiving fees, having contracts, having um, uh, consideration of the the amount and type of labour that goes into creating artwork or um, curating an exhibition or, or whatever it is. Um, so our current project, Nina and I um, wanted to sort of follow from that uh, to try and start to think um, more seriously about how collective organisation uh, could or um, uh, might be able to bring to practice um, in the arts sector. So, um, our project for the Tapestry Workshop was originally about just trying to envision um, what that might look like, um, what the key sort of concerns uh, might boil down to, um, and how to sort of promote this idea of um, or organising or, um, uh, you know, trying to work together to confront these sort of um, systemic issues in the arts. Uh, and that originally well, we had different ideas about um, what that might amount to, but um, on the one hand, it's kind of like a, a provocation of simply trying to propose the possibility of that sort of organisation and, and um, what we're doing here um, is making banners to create. Uh, as if such an organisation already or union already existed. Um, I guess to simply provoke that question of why isn't there um, a more substantial organisation through which artists are collectively organised. Uh, of course, there is some history of this in Australia, but there isn't currently something in my mind that kind of fulfills this function. Um, and we held a couple of workshops here a few weeks ago, um, I suppose because what we're interested in in this project uh, is like more practically how something like that could be put into practice, but um, I suppose the, uh, the actual work of thinking through the problems the want of a better word and, and the culture and um, the places in which um, change might be uh, put into effect. That's sort of the work of this project. Um, and uh, so our workshops were about just starting to ask those questions and um, trying to get a larger group of people to contribute to that. And so it was uh, mm -hmm. a couple of facilitators that helped us do this and we <coughs> basically um, focused on like, what would be a more desirable um, artistic culture or what would be desirable conditions for artists. Um, and then, so sort of like an imagination or something. And then a slightly more strategic discussion of you know, where, where that change might happen, what the priorities might be. Um, so, yeah, that, so far, that, uh, I mean, I think that was like a fruitful um, activity. There were lots of sort of interesting ideas, many commonalities. Um, uh, came out in terms of suggestions and that I suppose we're sort of trying to think through these more specific 
um, issues and um, places, but then there was also like, I guess, wider discussion of um, just how we, as artists and, um, and more widely in society, treat artistic work and think about that um, work and how, how that's valued and whether it is considered work, uh, whether it's acknowledged as work, or, um, uh, and whether it's, uh, you know, whether that labour or the kind of idea of professionalisation of the artist implies remuneration, um, and, you know, how that, how there's this sort of mismatch between um, that kind of um, culture of profession, professionalisation, which is promoted across all sectors of the arts, like right down to, you know, the simplest kind of arias working on a kind of bootstrap to uh, um, to major institutions, and but on the other hand, this all of this what we've sort of seen through the previous projects, this. Uh, you know, expectation on the part of artists and, and others that, um, that, you know, remuneration is like not a priority, it was not a, uh, not considered a default um, uh, ex expectation for artistic work. Yeah, so I, I guess with our banners, with, which are very much, you know, um, rudimentary to say at the moment. Trying to think about that larger cultural perspective and, and how we might um, promote this national.